Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the organizers for this uh, wonderful conference. I have uh, learned a lot and I hope you will still learn a lot. So uh, I'll be presenting some work I've been doing with uh, my collaborators here in Saclay and also uh, my, uh, my master's student in Munich and uh, also some work in progress with, uh, with Nate uh, and uh, Raphael. So this is basically the outline of my talk. And uh, because today we are going to have a nice uh, and fancy dinner in, uh, in, the, uh, in Paris. I think this is a bit boring and uh, let's get, it, guess, uh, get to, the, to the mood and present it as a talk menu. So we will have uh, some appetizers or should I say hors d'oeuvre. Um, then we will have some uh, first course, a main course, some dessert, and in the end to conclude everything, um, a liqueur in order to digest everything we have to uh, we have learned a liqueur so, sorry Le vin. <laughs> it, it's of course part of the the thing this is the questions wine is included of course so first dinner is served hors d'oeuvre so, um Let's consider a T4, a t four Taurus parameterized by one, two, three, four. Uh, the D1, D4, sorry, the D0, D4 system is basically uh, N D0 brains smeared on the T4 and some N4, um, D4 brains wrapped on the T4. Um, in the non-compact dimensions, this is a two charge black hole solution. And um, through T dualities, you can generate um, the D1, D3 black holes and uh, D2, D2 black holes. So, okay, the, the, the entropy scales like uh, square root of N0, N4, but you could ask what is the microscopic realization of these systems? So um, for the D0, D4, the, the way to understand this is that we have D0 instantons inside the, the, um, of the D4 world volume and uh, you can understand this as uh, the Higgs phase. The Higgs bran branch is parameterized by some um, hypermultiplets, chi, um, that are formed by the zero four strings. And uh, the dimension of this uh, Higgs branch is proportional to uh, N zero times N four. So to continue with the food analogy, uh, so if the microstructure was the food uh, and that the T four was our plate uh, in which food is served, well, the thing is that uh, you can't eat your food that easily. You have to uh, take the, these um, hypermultiplets to be equals to zero and go to the Coulomb branch. Uh, where, so the intersection with the Coulomb branch is uh, the phase where actually you could, um, oops, sorry, where am I? Uh, here. The intersection with the Coulomb branch is the phase where um, these uh, D zeros can leave the D4s. And this, for this, you need to put um, the hypermultiplet chi to be equal to zero. And the dimension of the, uh, the intersection of the Higgs branch and the Coulomb branch is uh, given by the number of uh, brains plus the number of N4 brains, because it corresponds to uh, the degrees of freedom uh, to move, to separate apart all of the D0s and the D4s. In the D1, D3 brain, uh, D1, D3 frame, uh, we consider D0, uh, D1 brains orthogonal to uh, D3 brains. And uh, what happens is that the D1 brains fractionate into strips between pairs of D3 brains. Uh, we still have uh, some kind of uh, Higgs branch. And uh, the idea of the Higgs branch is that this time the D1 brains um, sort of fractionate uh, between uh, these, uh, the D3 brains, and the, the, lo the location of the fractionated uh, D1 strips uh, give uh, the information about the Higgs branch. So in this time, because you have N1 times N3 uh, strips, the dimension of, uh, of uh, the Higgs branch is uh, N1, N3. To go to the Coulomb branch, uh, this time you need to restore some symmetry and to put all of your 
D1 brains to be on the line. And once you have that, you can take this D1 strip uh, together and pull it out of the T4. For the uh, D2D2, the story is a little bit more complicated. And we will discuss with uh, perhaps a little bit uh, in, a, in a, some paper with uh, Josef and Severin Lust uh, in a completely different context, but um, here it is. So the idea is that you consider D2 brains uh, along 1, 2, and D2 brains along 3, 4. Uh, let's say that from supergravity, you measure uh, N1D2 brains and N2D2 brains from left and to, I mean, from this side and uh, from, the, uh, from the vertical side. You can define um, uh, Z and W to be uh, part from uh, zero, uh, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. And the equations uh, for the brains is uh, given at which inter intersect at the origin uh, is given by Z times N1. Uh, times uh, W uh, power N2 equals to zero. Okay, but actually the, the Higgs phase is described by something that is more complicated because this polynomial can be deformed and the Higgs branch is parameterized by the coefficients of the holomorphic curves. And because you have um, N1 times N2 uh, coefficients on your holomorphic curves, then the dimension of the Higgs branch is uh, N1, N2. On the Coulomb branch, uh, if you want to take some pieces of the brains out, you have to restore some symmetry. And what happens is that sometimes your polynomial can be uh, written uh, this form. And uh, when, when you have this kind of form, it means that uh, they, you are, your brains are just uh, uh, wrapping some simple cycles, and then you can take them out from the T4. And again, the dimension of the, the, the Coulomb intersected with the Higgs branch is N1 plus N2. All right, so to recap, um, we have brains within brains, we have brains ending on brains, and brains intersecting on brain, uh, intersecting brains. Oops. Uh, all three systems are one quarter BBS systems on T4. Uh, the black holes are dual to each other, but the way the microstructure is realized is quite different. All right, so this was uh, the beginning, and so now we can go to the first course. Um, yeah, so the question was, uh, what about the string coupling when they intersect? Um, so I think at this stage, I, I don't necessarily want to uh, describe the thing in, uh, in supergravity. But uh, I think it depends on, on also the, the type of brain that you consider. OK. It's always weak. OK. OK, okay well, Yosef says it's. It's weak. OK. So this is the first course. So in, uh, in string theory, we, we tend to think that um, the microstates are described only at uh, a uh, regime of where the coupling is uh, weak in the open string uh, theory description, where to the toast coupling is weak. But the black hole solution is defined in the regime where um, GSN is big. Um, so the idea is that, well, what happens if you try to follow uh, the line from uh, the weak coupling? So you take a microstate, a particular microstate, and uh, you follow to the line in the supergravity regime. Um, usually, people think that as you increase n, uh, you also increase the, the Newton's constant. And uh, what happens is that, well, usually matter, uh, when you increase uh, gn, g Newton, the, uh, the matter becomes denser and denser. And at some point, the, uh, it's become so dense that uh, the matter is hidden behind the horizon. And uh, so from this perspective, you would say that uh, the microstates are only described in this region, in the uh, recoupling region, because whenever you go back, uh, if you go to the supergravity region, there's only this, the black hole solution, uh, that all the brain system are going to be uh, mapped to the same black hole solution. Uh, and uh, you can also think uh, from this uh, perspective in string theory. So suppose you, you take uh, type 2a or type 2b uh, in the um, following topology with a circle and, and four tars. Uh, take, for instance, the uh, D1, D5P system or the NS5F1P system. 
naively, you would say that the system is uh, one eighth PPS everywhere, and uh, you could be able to use the harmonic function rules, get a metric, and uh, then from the metric, you would deduce that um, this metric has a horizon at r equals to zero in supergravity. But the first fuzzball perspective uh, gives you something different. Uh, first, this argument uh, before um, here would not, would not work because uh, you have to think of um, black holes as brain configurations. And brain configurations, they can become bigger um, as the string coupling uh, increases. And the second um, point of view is that actually there is something, um, some mechanism which is local supersymmetry enhancement. That is to say that uh, in string theory, string, string theory excitations, that is to say brains and strings, they would combine together in order to form a bound state that is locally half PPS. That is to say that that has 16 local supersymmetries. So let me give you an example. Take, for instance, a fundamental string and a parallel of uh, momentum. Uh, so the, the, the F1 and the P to, uh, separately preserve 16 real superchargers, but together the F1 and P preserve eight superchargers. But actually there is a way to understand the, this microscopically. The string can carry a momentum by having a profile. And the profile, though it preserves the same global supersymmetries, has locally, uh, locally you can understand it just as a fundamental string that is boosted um, with the orthogonal direction, in an orthogonal direction. And when you, when you understand this locally, then actually this uh, fundamental string boosted along the orthogonal direction preserves 16 superchargers. So locally it has 16 superchargers. So, but what about the, the back reaction in supergravity? Before uh, going to the back reactions to supergravity, let me uh, define what I mean by uh, local and global supersymmetries. So you all know that uh, whenever you have uh, brains and strings uh, put on the, uh, on the vacuum in, uh, in type 2a or type 2b uh, string theory, it halves the number of supersymmetries. So the way we, we say it is that there exists a projector which can be written uh, in the following way with one plus P where P is a traceless involution uh, acting on, on the killing spinner equals to zero. The traceless involution, well, uh, it's, it's traceless, uh, sorry, it's an involution. It means that P squared equals to zero. So the eigenvalues are either plus one or minus one. And it's traceless. It means that uh, the eigenvalues, there's as much uh, plus eigenvalues as minus uh, eigenvalues. So it means that the constraint, this constraint divides the number uh, of supersymmetries by two. All right, but then uh, you can say, I don't need to just put one brain. I can take this type of brain and this type of brain and this type of brain. And so you can combine K different ki time, uh, kinds of excitations. And this time the killing spinner should lie at the intersection of all of the kernels. And this uh, space is giving you the number of global supersymmetries. Now you can think about to add other kinds of involution associating to other excitations and consider weights such that alpha one plus alpha n equals to one. And now consider this operator pi hat. So this pi hat should be understood as a mix of, the, of excitations with different charges. So the alpha i's, they are the, uh, the charge to mass ratio where m is the, uh, uh, the total mass of the entire uh, set. This pi hat, this operator is not necessarily a projector. And it turns out that pi hat is a projector if and only if the system has 16 supersymmetries. So by this uh, way of thinking, we can enhance the supersymmetries. But this is supersymmetry enhancement. What is uh, su local supersymmetries? Well, that's uh, the thing is, these alphas that you have here are not unique. And you can make alpha to depend on some, uh, some coordinates, for instance, along a bound state. And when you do that, the killing spinner epsilon becomes a function and uh, depends on where you are uh, in space time. So this uh, at given x, epsilon of x has to be in the kernel of pi hat of x. This is local supersymmetry. 
But global supersymmetry is that you need a epsilon that is constant that belongs to the intersection of all of the kernels where x is varying. Because this set is included in this set, it shows that the number of global supersymmetries is less than the number of local supersymmetries. And this is local supersymmetry enhancement. So to recap, local supersymmetry enhancement is that you can uh, consider a set of global supersymmetries. Sometimes there exists a whole moduli space of brains and string systems that are parameterized by alpha i's of x. This, these brain and string systems preserve the same global supersymmetries, but the number of local supersymmetries is enhanced. What you have to do is to first identify oops, the excitations, the additional excitations that you have to, uh, to put that I called the glues in order to make the bound state. And the second part, the second step, is that you have to determine the, the charge to mass ratios, the alpha i's. So back to our example, uh, we can write the involutions and, uh, and the projectors. And the step zero is that you can define the global supersymmetries uh, for, this, for this object. The first step is that you have to determine what are the glues. Here, the glues are the fundamental string along an uh, orthogonal direction and a momentum along another direction. Uh, the second step is that you can determine what are the alphas. And it turns out that they are given by cosine and sine functions. And you can understand this alpha here as actually the, the local angle that the fundamental string is making with uh, the y direction. So I promised you that I would go to uh, supergravity. So if you consider this setup, uh, you can apply the harmonic function rule. You would get a black hole where with horizon at r equals to zero. Now, with this more complicated string with a profile, uh, there's also a, a metric. And it turns out that this one is smooth and horizonless. So uh, you can understand these solutions as some classical string profiles. Well, the metric that is sourced by some classical string profiles and of course, the number of them is infinite. But uh, because you're, uh, you're in the phase space, you want to uh, quantize uh, these, uh, these things. And so you can use the geometric quantization and, uh, and show that the, the number of quantum states of these account for the F1P black hole entropy. And so. It's not with the quality sign, it's with the sim sign. So um, in, in the paper by Slava Rishkov, for example. Yeah, so in the Rishkov, there is like a factor of, uh, so, so it's like square root of four divided by six or something like this, right? So they are the, um, they are the uh, how do you say, the fermionic degrees of freedom which are missing. But, uh, but of course, they, uh, he just considered the, um, the bosonic parts. And then there is there's a, uh, there a paper by, I think, uh, Ah, I can't remember the name. So that deals with the fermionic part, but not, not necessarily in the geometric quantization uh, perspective. But uh, it's, um, uh, so it's from Taylor. Yeah, sorry, it's from Taylor. Puzzles with the uh, internal excitations by Taylor Skander is from 2007. Anyway, yeah. And so from the fuzzball perspective is that what you want to do is to take a brain system and follow the brain system from weak to, to strong copying. And uh, you, they would even say, tell you something more, is that they would expect uh, the solution to be different than that of the black hole. Yeah, but on the other hand, you could say, well, look, uh, this is just uh, two charged black holes. And uh, for two charged black holes, we know that uh, before, uh, so. The, the, the singularity and the horizon are all at r equals to zero, at least before uh, quantum corrections. And so we, you don't really know if this kind of stringy structure is resolving the horizon or the singularity. And uh, well, you say, okay, well, we, you, you have to go to three charged black holes because 
the three charged black holes, the singularity and the horizon are separated. So you can look at, uh, look at uh, D1, D5P black holes or F1 and S5P black holes. And the problem is that if you take D1, D5P black holes, you don't know how to follow the surrender of alpha microstates. So how do we do? All right, so let's go to the, to the main course, to the foie gras, as Joseph would say. Um, so the idea that uh, people were doing in the uh, first book paradigm, or at least, in the, uh, uh, at least here in Saclay, is to say that actually there is a trick, the super, tri uh, super tube trick, which is to say that whenever you consider uh, D1, D5 brains, uh, actually they would puff up in uh, a kluzo klein monopole. So the thing is that this thing, this kluzo klein monopole lives in a non-compact dimension. So psi is living in a non-compact dimension. The, whereas the D1D5P system, it's a point in the non-compact dimension. So the D1D5 brain system is gaining a momentum through the, uh, the kluzo klein monopole. And, uh, and this is uh, linked to the super tubes. So uh, we have the cruiser klein monopole. And uh, what is this uh, P doing here? Is that this uh, momentum, this angular momentum, stabilizes the size of the super tube. So really, the idea is to replace the delta function brain singularity in the non-compact dimension of the D1, D5 system by something that is extended on in the non-compact dimensions. And so I think the analogy is, uh, is the following. So, so, so suppose that you, you take a, um, uh, an electron. So you put some charges on the electron, of course. The electron sources a field that is 1 over r squared. It's quite uh, singular. But if you put the same charge in a ring, uh, well, if you go close to the ring, then uh, the, the electric charge, uh, the electric field is going to be 1 over sigma. But uh, very far away, you would still measure 1 over r squared. So you are desingularizing the uh, the uh, the electron by uh, extending in the non-compact dimensions, and so I think this is the the same philosophy here. So, um, oops, the the bound state that you get is globally uh, quarter BPS, but locally uh, half BPS. And uh, the point, if you want to add uh, the momentum here is that you have to find a way to consistently add the momentum and keep the local half BPS structure. Uh, and in the end, what you get is what people call superstrata. All right. However, there are some drawbacks to, uh, to this approach. So the first one is that uh, it has been shown that the uh, entropy of the superstrata is uh, parametrically smaller than that of the black hole. The second one is that because you need, uh, you have this uh, uh, size in the non-compact dimensions, you need an angular momentum to, uh, to stabilize it. And uh, so you would, there is necessarily a non-vanishing angular momentum in the non-compact dimensions. And so this is a, a way to understand that there is some kind of atypicality perhaps uh, of, uh, of the microstates. And in particular, uh, the, uh, the microstates do not have a exact spherical symmetry, at least from the bosonic part. And um, another point of view, another point is that there is a limit where this two super tube profile shrinks to a point. And when this uh, shrinks to a point, then the information about who is mo carrying the, moment the momentum is lost. And uh, you would see that the microstate geometry, that is say the superstrata, seem to degenerate into the black hole solution. So usually people could say that, well, but you know, there are some uh, quantum corrections that happen and uh, you would never go into uh, into the, the, the pure um, limit where it becomes a black hole. But on the other hand, if the quantum corrections are important, then uh, the supergravity uh, solution is not very, uh, very good uh, enough. So we have to think uh, differently. And uh, why not go back to our, um, our appetizer? And the appetizer says this, maybe we can add some momentum to what we know already. So how do we do? Well, take uh, all, of the, all of these systems and um, make a T-duality along a direction that is transverse to the T4. So you would get a, a D1, D5 system, a D2, D4 system, and a D3, D3 system. 
All right, so this is, I represent here the Y direction that is transverse to the T4. And then on top of that, you want to add some momentum on your microstructure. So what happens is that we kind of know what's, what's uh, some results in, uh, in the literature. So for the D1D5 P system, we, the, the microstructure that are carrying the momentum are usually understood as the one five strings. So th this is the, uh, the leading order of the entropy. For the uh, D1D2 system, this is the fractionated uh, D1 brains. Actually, it's the D2 brains, sorry. It's the fractionated D2 brains. And this is uh, linked with the digraph Belinda Belinda uh, way of, uh, of doing things. So the di digraph Belinda Belinda microstates. And uh, on the other hand, with, with this D3D3, uh, D3, then what happens is that you have uh, some deformation of your holomorphic curve here. And uh, the deformation depends on where you are at, at the Y circle. Uh, and so this is how they, uh, they carry momentum. And uh, this is a, let's say, a easier version of uh, Maldacena Strominger uh, uh, written, sorry, MSW. So again, the black holes are dual, but the microstructure uh, is realized very differently. So the, the difficult part was that for the one five strings, we don't know how to follow them when we increase GS to be big. But what about the other microstructures? So take, for instance, the DVV microstates. So instead of considering uh, D1, D5P system, let's uh, do a uh, S, uh, S dual and a T dual. So go to uh, a NS5 F1P system uh, in type 2A. We know exactly where the entropy is coming from. It's coming from little strings. And I can understand it in the M-theory perspective as some fractionated M2 brains uh, inside M5 brains. So, right, so you have horizontally some M5 brains, you have a, the common Y circle, and, uh, and here you have the uh, 11th dimension. And so you have, whenever you put some uh, M2 brains uh, transverse to the M5 brain, it, uh, it becomes M2 strips. The M2 strips carry the momentum because they are very numerous, they account for the entropy. The entropy is given by uh, two pi square root of C divided by six times NP, where C is the central charge. And this central charge is six times N1, N5. For the bosonic sector, it's C equals to four times N1, N5. All right, so what is important is that here, all the physics, all of the, uh, the momentum that is carried here is carried in the, uh, four, the four torus. So the, bra the brain system is a point in the non-compact uh, spatial dimensions. And this is how uh, it ensures that for the bosonic sector, you would get exact spherical symmetry. Well, the thing is, uh, we enhanced the local supersymmetries of the digraph Belinda Belinda microstates. In particular, we found the supersymmetric projector that not only preserves the supersymmetries of NS5, F1, and P in type 2A, but also corresponds to an object with 16 local supersymmetries. So let's have a look at this projector. First, we have on the first line, the excitations defining the global supersymmetries. On the second line, we have the uh, excitations corresponding to the glues. So uh, because we have a lot of ingredients, let's put first C equals to zero. Uh, at C equals to zero, what you have on the right is equal to zero, and only you have the ingredients on the, on the right. <coughs> So uh, here, it means that you can uh, bind a NS5 with an F1 by adding some local ingredients of D4 and D2. What does it mean in M theory? Well, this uh, NS5 brain can be understood as an M5 brain. And this fundamental string can be understood as an um, M2 brain. This transition here means that the rough angles that you would have in the, with the M5 and M2 would become something smooth. The new brain system looks like a furrow that is uh, 
along y, where y direction is the uh, direction here. So this pharaoh is actually dual to a Kadan Manas nest spike. So I think I forgot to add the, the picture, but what happens is that you can consider a D4 brain and a fundamental string terminating on it. And uh, the idea is that there is, Kalan and Maldacena showed that there is a transition such that in the end, this is some picture. And the correct picture is that this, this fundamental string would pull the world volume of the D4. And so this is the real picture that you see. As, as you uh, move along the spike, you would see that here you would have more and more uh, of the fundamental string charge, whereas here you have only uh, the, uh, the four charge. So here, it's similar. Uh, when you are, when you are uh, up here, you have only the, M2 uh, the, the M5 charge that would correspond to the M5 that is here. And when you're down here, what you see, what you measure is only the M M2 charge. So the orientation, so the, uh, you can, the, uh, sorry, how do you say? The uh, orientation of the local piece of the furrow de determines the ratio between the M5 and M2 charge. And this local transition here has uh, a uh, very interesting thing because it means that the, at the low, at a more global scale, the DVD microstate is going to transition into, into a kind of labyrinth or a maze. And this is what we call the super maze. Then uh, you can put uh, C non-zero, right? Now we are ready to understand what it is. And actually um, you can understand this from the M theory perspective, which is to say that whenever you put back uh, the C, you are adding the possibility for the system to carry momentum. And the thing is that this furrow that you had before is going to carry momentum by having uh, through, through some ripples that are modulated orthogonally to its surface. So here I have chosen a set of parameters where A, B, and C are parameterized by uh, this uh, solution. And uh, here you would see that uh, uh, the, the bending angle beta, so depending on, on where, whether you are more here or here, it, it controls, the, uh, it controls the, uh, the, the bending angle and it interpolates between a uh, M5 brain carrying momentum, momentum and a M2 brain carrying momentum. In reality, you can, uh, you can have other solutions. You can not necessarily have like ABC equals to this. You can take uh, ABC equals to uh, different kinds of solutions. And it corresponds to different modes where uh, on the one side, so this was the one that I showed, it was uh, correspond to uh, a system where both the M5 and the M2 would move together simultaneously, but you can also make the M2 immobile and uh, put the M M2 to move by carrying momentum. Uh, the same uh, happens with the uh, M2 brain moving and the M5 immobile. And of course, this mode is the mode that carries the most of the entropy uh, because this corresponds to the motion of uh, the, uh, the strips of the M2, which are much numerous than the, uh, that of the uh, M5 brains. So it, it happens that whenever the M2 strip moves, it not, it's not just the M2 strip it's that the entire furrow that moves with it. And this is how one ensures that there's a motion that preserves 16 local supersymmetries. And because all of the motion is happening inside of the T4, the microstate is ensured to have exact spherical symmetry in the bosonic sector. So, um, well, can they describe, at least in principle, by su in supergravity? Um, if I go back to uh, previous literature, Usually, uh, the problem with, uh, with supergravity is that, let's say you go to type 2a, and the only way they can separate the N5 and S5 brains uh, is in the uh, non-compact dimensions. And uh, from um, Stefano's talk, we know that uh, there is a region close to the brains uh, where dilaton gets very large. And so supergravity breaks down. So here, maybe there is something different. And uh, we have the hope that the physics, at least here, th this uh, uh, 
suggestion is better because, well, what happens in the um, M2, M5 P frame, the basic ingredient of the super maze is the M5 with sometimes like the, some M2 flux on it. And uh, this time you don't have um, a, um, a dilaton, dilaton anymore. And so this way there's like the hope that uh, the supergravity description is valid close to the brain as well. So what do they look like? What these uh, micro microstates would look like in the regime where, the, where everything is back reacted? Well, you see, this picture is uh, where the horizontal line is a T4. But you can uh, take a very easy, a very simple model, two-dimensional simple model, where you smear in the T3 that is uh, inside of the T4. So he, you, you would get, instead of uh, these nice uh, curvy uh, things, you would get a uh, string web structure. And um, because all these brain webs, uh, sorry, all these stream webs are uh, like around some uh, cycles, you would expect a, that there is a geometric transition. That in the end, you would have some bubbles uh, in the internal dimensions. All right. So now we can go to the dessert, and uh, the dessert is uh, is for is with respect to a D1 D5 P type of fractionation, and because it's uh, some work in progress, uh, I put this uh, interrogation point here. And so, depending on your taste, you can take the dessert uh, with a grain of salt. So. Back to the, uh, the excitations with the uh, 16 logo supersymmetries. We have the D1, D5, P, the super maze, and D3, D3. Uh, we have showed that this has 16 logo supersymmetries. The D3, D3, P has 16 logo supersymmetries because uh, it corresponds to the uh, holomorphicity. So uh, if you require that this brain wraps some holomorphic curve, it's equivalent to have 16 logo supersymmetries. But what about D1, D5, P? Oh, sorry. Uh, before I go that, I think that what we un understand from this, from the super, uh, local supersymmetries, is that the microstates are de described by the degrees of freedom that are excited in accordance with the local supersymmetries. Right? So we have some uh, momentum carriers. What are these momentum carriers? The momentum carriers are some, uh, some degrees of freedom that have 16 local supersymmetries. All right, but what happens with D1, D5P? Can we understand it with the 16 local supersymmetries? <coughs> so I have bad news and good news. The bad news is coming from the literature, uh, from actually people here, which tell me that the only way to get 16 local supersymmetries from the D1, D5P system is to use a closer client P monopole in the non-compact dimensions. So whatever I have told you before with the, the uh, intuition on the internal dimension uh, should not work uh, anymore, right? So it, it's, it's impossible to enhance the local supersymmetries to 16 with only internal degrees of freedom. The good news is that, well, Nick and Yusuf are also kind of uh, my mentors, and they told me something, is that whenever there's a theorem in the literature, well, you should go to the hypothesis first because sometimes the hypothesis could, could not, uh, could, uh, could break, right? And so the thing is that um, there is a, an ansatz in their work. So they made an ansatz about the symmetry structure of the glues of the dipoles. So if you think about the, the glues that you need to put uh, two by two for D1, D5, uh, D1, uh, P or, D, uh, or D5, P, there is always uh, this angular momentum along Psi uh, that plays the role of the glue. And, uh, and so this defines for you a kind of symmetry structure where you have this uh, glue that is at the center of, uh, your, uh, of your diagram. And it turns out that you can take another ansatz about the symmetry structure, uh, which uh, has, doesn't have the same symmetry. And with that, you can see that there's only internal glues, and it works. But maybe you can't really see it, but here I have a D3 along Y and 1, 2 
and a D3 along Y and 3, 4. What are those glues? So this is really the uh, grain of salt uh, slide. Maybe some instanton with the D0, uh, with the D3, D3 dipoles. So what are these? I should, I can go to first to the uh, D0, D4 frame, right? Uh, where these uh, dipoles would correspond to D2, D2 dipoles along one, two and three, four. So how, how should I understand it? Well, maybe I can take a uh, D1, D3 spike like this. And I can T dualize along Z. Uh, what I get is a smeared D0 instanton along Z in a D4 world volume. But I also have uh, the glues, right? So here the, D1, the D1 is not only along Z, but it's also a little bit along the uh, horizontal axis. And so this would become a D2. And uh, also I, I have some uh, horizontal D3, but I also have some uh, vertical D3s. And these are some D3 dipoles along the vertical axis. And so this, uh, these dipoles would become some kind of cloud of D2, D2 that uh, surrounds the, uh, the D0 instanton. Okay, so I think the, the message is that it's usually very difficult to construct multi instanton solutions uh, as long as the number of D0 brains and the D4 brains uh, is non one. But this uh, suggests a kind of local picture uh, around the D0 instantons. And it suggests that actually the D0 instantons, they are surrounded by some D2, D2 cloud that makes uh, everything uh, 16 supersymmetric with, with the 16 local supersymmetries. Okay, so end of the uh, grain of salt slide. What about, is it possible to combine two types of fractionation? So is it possible to combine D1, D5, P type of fractionation and with uh, F1 and S5P type of fractionation. So Sturminger Waffe and uh, Diagra Valinda Valinda. Um, in other words, can we, can we simultaneously enhance the supersymmetries of brains within brains and brains ending on brains? So the thing that is that we can consider this kind of system with the D4, sorry, D6, D2, and S5. The D6 is along Y and Z, 1, 2, 3, 4. The D2 is along Y and Z. And the D5 is along Y and 1, 2, 3, 4. The, uh, this system preserves four supersymmetries. And we have on the left part, brains within brains. So D4, D2 brains within D6 brains. And on the right part, we have the two brains ending on the D5 brains. And it turns out that the answer is yes, it is possible. Uh, we have shown with uh, my, uh, my students that it is possible to enhance the supersymmetries of this system. Now you can go even further. You can ask the question, is it possible to add the momentum to this system, right? Because there is the, uh, the common direction Y here, here, and here. You could add a momentum. And it turns out that right now we're working on it, but the answer is that we don't know. All right. So I think this is, uh, we are approaching the end of our uh, dinner. Um, we can have uh, the, the liquor. So the conclusion, is that uh, the global charges and supersymmetries control the near horizon region of the black hole. And local supersymmetries are a means to get information on the microstates. The 1 8th BPS system, that is to say three charged black holes, have a large moduli space of solutions that have more supersymmetries locally. And this is really crucial to understand uh, whether the brain, the, the microstates in string theory are resolving the singularity or the horizon. So the microstate geometries program used to replace the D1, D5P horizons with brain systems that extend in the non-compact dimensions. But this approach seems to have limits in terms of entropy and perhaps of typicality. So in this work, uh, we tried a new approach, the, namely that Microstates can carry momentum by having motion in the internal dimensions. And it means that at least for the bosonic part of the solution, these will have exact spherical symmetry and therefore uh, typicality. 
And for the entropy side, well, you know that the uh, DVV microstates account for the black hole entropy. And now we have identified what they become when the brains start to interact. So these super maze, which is the result, right, of uh, the interaction between the brains, they have 16 local supersymmetries, just like the superstrata, but they inherit the spherical symmetries of the DVG microstates, and they account for at least square root of four divided by six of the black hole entropy, corresponding to the uh, bosonic part of the entropy. So I think the takeaway message is the following. So in the examples that we have seen in the T4, uh, the typical microstates are actually in the Coulomb, in the, in the Higgs branch and not in the Coulomb branch. And up to now, um, we, uh, the approach is that, sorry, the, what, we, what we were doing is that we wanted to approach the black hole typicality from the Coulomb phase. So I think this is what uh, I have the impression when I, when I see most of the talks um, here. And the reason is because we thought that we can only uh, construct 16 local supersymmetry states and supergravity solutions uh, only, only from that phase, right? Only from the, from the, um, the Coulomb phase. But the thing is that uh, it, it turns out that the Higgs phase has also 16 local supersymmetries. And uh, there is some two papers by Lunen which shows that there is a possible one-to-one -one correspondence with the supergravity solution as well. And so I think this should be the, the hope and uh, perhaps the uh, directions in which we want to go. That is to say, to study the back reaction of these typical Higgs phase microstates. So we are at the end of our talk. And so I would like to thank you for your degustation. Is there any question? No. So, so what happens to the T4 factor of the geometry in your construction? You Is mean the, con the conformal uh, factor in front of the, the DST4? The whole metric, how, how does it change uh, when I look at your... Well, there's a near horizon limit, right? So in the end, it's supposed to... Okay, so... Um, so there is a, there, I would expect that there is a throat such that first it stabilizes. So the Q1 and the Q3, let's say, stabilize. But at some point, you would expect that there is uh, the, uh, these effects. You would uh, expect the geometric transition like, like this. So at some point, you would see some bubbles. Uh, so right, so when, when you have um, brains that wrap some cycles, uh, the geometric transition means that uh, if you if you're close enough to the uh, to the brains, and you go uh, parallel to the brains, the uh, g parallel parallel is shrinking to zero. So in the end, you are making bubbles out of uh, out of any cycles that you're you're wrapping. And so I think this is the idea: is that uh, these uh, super maze they are making some uh, weird uh, bubbles. I mean, sorry, sorry, they are wrapping some cycles. And after geometric transition, they, they are like completely in the, in the T4, right? So th this direction is the T4. So the T4 would break into some kind of bubbles. I think this is what we expect. And, and the size of the T4 is stringy in your construction or? Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but I think the, uh, the size of the bubbles that you get in the end in the T4 depends on the number of fluxes that you have. So although from a uh, very far away, so if you, if you put your microstructure uh, in uh, R equals to zero, from very far away, uh, the size of the T4 could be like a stringy, stringy size. But as you come closer and closer to the, uh, to the brains, what we expect that is that the size of, uh, of the bubbles is controlled by the number of brains that you put. Okay. Any other question? So these bubbles would then be somewhat like the bubbles we heard about in the previous talk by Ba? Well, I was finishing my slide, so I uh, unfortunately couldn't <laughs> see it. But uh, possibly, yes. Yeah. Pardon? Before. OK. The bubbles appear when you have the T4 as 
The bubbles which pair in E will have have a T4 isometry, so they don't have any KK modes on the torus, for example. While those bubbles, because they are, sorry? Can you make things depend on sine of uh, alpha four, or, you know, sine of one of the T4 angles? That's a massive KK mode in four degree, in four degree gravity. I don't think any of this, I've, I haven't seen any solution of those yet. Wait, I don't understand. I mean, we can, you can collapse internal. No, 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 no. There's a difference between collapsing a circle when you have an isometry and having a wiggle on the circle. Ah, okay, okay. No, so that, that, is, that we don't have yet. Yeah, so this solution has wiggles. You know, you go on, this, this is one of, the, one of the T2 directions. You go on it, you bump into an M2. You go more, you bump into another M2. <clears> and then you go more, you bump into another. So you just, you, you just have bumps. But, but in the region where these bubbles are, isn't this at a scale where the wiggles are small? No, 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 the bubbles are the wiggles. I mean, you, you'll bubble this whole structure. So when you go on the torus, you'll see a bubble and then another bubble and then another bubble and then come back to the torus, back where you were. So you really have all the KK modes, you know, from a 4 degree gravity perspective, you have all the KK tower coming down on top of you. It's a very weird solution from, a, I mean, again, it doesn't fit into any of the minimal supergravities we have. And from an ADS-CFT correspondence perspective, you know, this is just ADS-3 with some, demand, with, with some very high dimensional operators. <coughs> so, yeah, I mean, listen to Ibu's talk, I was just thinking this, there's a straightforward way to add charges to a neutral solution, right? You boost and dualize, you can add, let's say, D1, D5 charges to a neutral solution. And then it will have to be something in the near horizon. In the, in, then you can just map it to something in the CFT. So I guess it's a valid question to ask if we take one of your states and if we manage to add to it large D1, D5 charges, it becomes near extremal D1, D5. Then, uh, I mean, on the gravity side, there's a straightforward way to do that, right? Uh, it's just a, one of the TDRD, ODD groups. Then you could ask, it has to be something in the CFT and you could try to pin down what it is, right? Yeah, yeah, but you haven't... Okay. But, but it could be these, obviously. Uh, no, but in, in its, in no. The, the, all the boosting preserves the U1. The BPS. Okay. All the boosting preserves the torus U1. So if you have a solution that, which has a torus U1, yeah, you can boost it like crazy, you still have the U1. Those should break the U1. So they're completely different class. And they don't belong to any of the known classes of solutions. You know, they're just, you know, 10 these solutions, we can do them. And, you know, you know, Lunin has this uh, solution class and, you know, Nick redirived them. And so we have some ways of, some ways of approaching this. But, you know, you have to work straight in 10D. There's no minimum supergravity or anything which you can use. You have to work straight in 10D. Okay, very nice. Yeah. Other questions? No, so thanks each one again. Okay, so for the second talk, we will have uh, Bin Guo. We'll talk about the holography of touch and last string on ADS3 or default. Okay. 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 First, I would, like, I would like to thank Nick and Josef for giving me the opportunity to present our work. And uh, I would like to thank everyone here to make this wonderful conference. Today, I'm going to talk about the holography of tension and string theory on ADS3 or default. It's based on our work with Matthias Gabadias and uh, Samir Mathur. Okay. So first let me talk about some motivations. So we know the ADSFT is a strong weak duality. To understand the gravity and the string in the bulk, we need the strongly coupled CFT. But four years ago, Eberhard, Gabadia, and Gopakuma, they find the interesting weak weak duality between tangent strings on ADS3, Gosset3, and the free D1, D5 CFT, and a similar case for ADS5. So it will be very interesting to find other background you can do this exact weak and weak duality. 
So a very natural background to consider is the, the ADS3 cross ADS3 orbi, CK orbifold. It is very interesting. Um, it, it, it's kind of simple. It's like a point mass, put a point mass in the ADS3. And uh, if you compute the ADM mass of this system, so we have this um, parameter k here. When k is 1, it goes down to the empty ADS. There's no orbifold at all. If k approach infinity, we approach the BDD from the bottom. So, it, so the mass is negative. So we approach the zero mass from the bottom. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Ceci est un message de la direction du centre de Paris-Saclay destiné aux salariés électeurs. Depuis hier 10 heures, vous pouvez voter pour élire vos représentants du personnel et ce pour un mandat de 4 ans. Ces élections se déroulent par voie électronique. Le site de vote est www.cea.webvote.fr est accessible sur Internet. Munissez-vous de vos identifiants pour voter. En cas de perte, le site de vote vous précisera les modalités de récupération. Soyez acteur, allez voter. Vous avez jusqu'au 13 juin midi. Bonne journée. Okay. So finding this um, weak and weak duality on this um, background itself is an interesting question. And it can be probably used to study the um, black hole physics. And another motivation is, so the ADA3 orbifolds appear um, in lots of micro state geometries. For example, the two charge um, solutions found by 20, almost 20 years ago, and also the J-mark um, geometry. They all have the ADA3 orbifolds structure in the third region. And uh, it is generally believed that the generic microstates live in the limit where k is much bigger than 1. And uh, there's interesting work from last year by Shugumori to start with the ADS orbifold and put the, the um, graviton there to make a microstate geometry called this microstate geometry. And today we will put a string in this background and uh, look at the spectrum. Oh, if you have any question, please ask. ask. So this is the plan of the talk. I will first review the spectrum, the original um, ADS3 cross A3 spectrum, and then the spectrum on the orbifold and the more general orbifold. Then I will talk about the, um, the three sectors and the black hole formation. Okay. So maybe let me first review the original work by um, Gabriel and his collaborator. So string, string theory um, in, this, in this background with, with one unit of NS, NS flux is due to the symmetric orbifold CFT. So in this case, the string length is comparable to the ADS length scale. So the string is very big. And the duality is roughly like this. The empty ADS3 background corresponds to, on the CFT side, all the cycles are one cycle, and they are all in the NS ground state. And uh, if you put a string in the empty ADS um, with winding W, so it has winding W around the ADS, then it corresponds to a W cycle on the boundary. In this system, because the string is very big, there's no local gravitons. The string is very big with respect to the function. Oh, it's, uh, oh um, yes, yes. Uh, actually, with respect to the ADS length scale. Usually, the string is very small compared to the ADS length scale. But just because of this, you can't say it's big. You need to compare it with some other scale with oh, respect the to which scale it's is big. much less than these two okay. scales. Okay. Okay. Now let's um, try to reproduce the um, space line. Uh, the, the spectrum from the worksheet. So the worksheet theory is a west middle weight model based on this supergroup. It has an ADS3 part, that's L2R, and S3 part, SU2. And uh, if you look at SU2 
So they are at level one. If you look at SU2, in general, when the level is larger than one, it describes the S3, but at level one is a special point. It actually describes the S1 of cycle with special radius. So, so a string with winding W in the ADS, it also has a winding W around S3, can be generated from the Walsh spectral flow of W units. It was found um, by Madansina Ogre. And for this special model, so this is the spectral flow. So the, the J, K, S, and L are the Walsh current, and the J, is, the J current is the, an ADS3 part, so the SL2R. If you spectral flow the, the J part, th then you create um, winding around the ADS3. And we also spectral flow for the K um, modes, and we get winding around. Oh, no, this is on ADS3, this is on S3. OK. But to, to keep the, on the algebra environment, we also need to change the fermionic part S and the conformal part L. Um, so let's talk about the physical spectrum. So we used the quantities before the spectral flow. So the ground state, um, before um, the ground state is described by um, before the spectral flow, L zero equals to zero and the K three zero equals to half. And we can um, we can build excitations on top of this ground state. Um, so N S is the excitation level, and the delta I is the charge, of, the S U two charge of each excitation. So the NS and delta I has contributions from four free bosons. So they are integer mode, no zero mode, and the charge neutral. And there are four free fermions. They are integer mode. Um, two of them have um, charge plus half with no zero mode, and two of them have negative charge, negative half and zero mode. So we can, so here we know the L and the K. So we can use the mass shell condition. The spec the L0 after the spectral flow must be zero. So here you can see, if we know the L tilde before the spectral flow and the K tilde before the spectral flow, we can solve for the J. So we can find the J by using this um, measure condition. And then we um, find the space-time dimension and charge. So what you're describing was not done by Gavon, Curtis, Solv, and Cyberg many years ago? Oh, um, the model uh, used in Gabadier's paper is a slightly hybrid formalism. It's not, uh, it's not the usual where k is larger than 1. So there's no c c continuous. Um, I understand that K, K is not continuous, but I'm asking if the spectrum that you're describing was not derived in an old paper by Zyberg, Kutasov, and Givon, titled Comments on ADS3, which was before Maldacena Oguri. Um, I guess that email was correctly, the, the West Amino with, with the model is slightly different. So they have, the, the general method are similar. Let's look at some special case of the spectrum. So you can look at the uh, um, excitation. There's no excitation level is zero. So you put zero here. Then you will find the dimension equals to the charge. So these are the 16 chiral primaries. But now they are stranger states. You can also look at on um, level zero, but winding one. So in that case, you have just a, a string with winding one in the bulk. If you put the, look at the lowest energy state, it has zero, zero dimension and zero charge. Then this string becomes the background string. And uh, if you keep the winding number W, and uh, you, you can find the lowest dimension. So they grow linearly with W, and the gap is one over W, if you put the excitation on top of this string. 
So now um, we need to reproduce this spectrum from the D1, D5 CFD. So the, um, the CFD at three point, the CFD is described by a symmetric orbifold. So we have n copies of T4 and uh, orbifolded by the permutation group Sn. It has n equals to four comma four supersymmetry. Um, so we can um, represent each T4, uh, the CFD with CFD um, by a circle, a particular time size. And due to this um, orbifold, we can have twisted sectors where n copies when um, several cycles join into a long cycle. So here, this is a one cycle, and this is a four cycle. And the excitation we have here, we can put four free bosons and four free fermions. The, the total length of the cycles is two pi n, so we fix this n. So all, all the possible state are, um, you can find all the possible state by the partition of this um, m. For example, when n equals to four, you can have four single a one in cycle, single cycles and or two two cycles or one four cycle. Now, let's try to reproduce the spec on um, Walsh spectrum. Um, <coughs> so here we will use slightly different um, way to, to to reproduce this. It, it will be more straightforward. So on the Walsh sheet. Um, we know all the fields are integer molded. So it's better to start with the Riemann sector of the boundary CFD. So let's look at Riemann, set, um, ground, Riemann ground state of um, L cycle. <coughs> okay. So there are 16 Riemann ground states, and uh, there are two very special. One is the bottom one with um, charge minus half, left and right moving charge minus half, and this top one with um, plus half. And they all have dimension L over four. L is the length of that cycle. So we can construct all the states from the top one. You can also construct from the, any other state, but from top one, you will see a, a direct match. So we can construct from the top one by applying the bosonic mode and also the fermionic mode, negative modes. Especially we have two zero mode from the negative charged fermions. So let's look at the um, um, excited string. Um, so the cycle corresponds to excited string in the bulk. So the, the cycle from the boundary is like this. So it's built on the top Riemann ground state. So we know this ground state has dimension omega over W over four. And the excitations is in unit of one over W. So in CFT is the excitation level. So this is the dimension of this state. And the charge is the ground state charge plus the charge from each excitation. But we know the ADS um, vacuum should correspond to the ground state in the inner sector. Sure. So we need to do the spectral flow. Here we call n equals to four spectral flow to distinguish from the Walsh spectral flow. And if we do this spectral flow, we find the state, the, the cycle on the boundary side, the dimension and charge of this cycle. And we have this um, result. Okay. So here I put the, the result from the boundary CFT the dimension and charge, and also the um, spectrum from the wall sheet, and you can see they are exactly the same. Um, if, if you have, um, if the field contents for the NS and, and the CFD are the same. Actually, they are the same. They all have four bosons and four fermions, and there are only two fermionic zero modes with, with negative charge. So you can see, in this formalism, we can match the um, spectrum precisely from both sides. And a string with one in W in the bulk goes bound to a W cycle on the boundary. Oh, um, and, and question. So somehow you landed here naturally in the Ramon Ramon sector of the holographic CFT. Because uh, 
Is this the case? It seems. Oh, we can match the um, inner sector or remote sector. Um, we have this. Um, we, we can change the coordinate to, to do that. Yeah, is that simply a choice that you made earlier on that you ended up with periodic fermions from the world sheet? I mean, could you have made a choice earlier just equally well to get to the global yeah, MSNS yeah. vacuum? Yeah, you can match it in different coordinates. Okay, so it's just a choice. Yeah, Thanks. But, uh, the original interest is to match, to find the spectrum on top of the empty areas. So I should try to follow this. Okay, thanks. Now let me talk about the um, the orbifold. So we um, so we start with the ADS three cross S three metric, and uh, so the periodicity, of the wise periodic um, by two pi, and similarly four percent of phi. And we can do the ZK before we do is we rotate Y by 2 pi over K and at the same time rotate Psi by minus 2 pi over K and then we identify the points before and after. So the rotation around Y, so on the watch is the, the rotation around Y is generated by the J, the J is the generator for the ADS, corresponding to the ADS and three generator. So the rotation around Y is generated by J minus J bar and the rotation around Psi is generated by K minus K bar. So we have this um, worksheet generator. Um, so we so let's try to look at the, the conical singular. Um, so this is a ZK orbifold and uh, let's try to find the conical singularity of this orbifold. So we find the singularities at this place or oh, it's well known is at this place. Uh, so um, when R approach zero and the theta approach pi over two, we can approximate the metric uh, like this. It has two, two planes, the Ry plane and the theta psi plane in polar coordinate. And uh, the identification um, is like this. So we identify, uh, we rotate Y by some amount and the psi by the same amount, then we um, identify them. So let me give you an example um, picture here. One k is six equals to six. So we, so for the Ry plane, we divide this um, into six identical pieces, and then we identify. So only one of them is physical. Um, so the point identified like this. So we can have a string not winding once the full circle around the ADS three, but only partially. You can put this um, on worksheet generator, or this or before generator on the worksheet and do the usual or before procedure, find the, use S transformation, find the spectrum, the twisted sector. Um, so you will see, you will get the same, um, the same formula for the charge and dimension, but now the W can be fr fractional in, in unit of one over K. So the reason, it, um, you can see similar here. So originally the W must be an integer before the orbifold, but because of the orbifold, you can go partially of the um, original ADS. So now the W can be fractional. And we also need to pro projection, orbifold projection to require the state satisfy this condition. Now let's try to um, reproduce the same spectrum from the boundary CFT. So um, this is very similar to the proposal made in, made by a um, paper from Martin Eck and uh, Matt Elgin in 2002. Mm. Maybe let me expand from the picture. Okay. So the original ADS um, correspond to the boundary CFT where all the cycles are one cycle. Now we um, fold the AD or before the ADS, then we have to do similar thing for the CFT. Then we fold the boundary, each one cycle of the boundary cycle into a um, three cycle like this. So the boundary, so the empty, um, so the background ADS three cross three, CK or before background corresponds to um, 
the CFD state where all the cycles are k-cycles. And in, we start with this um, Riemann ground state and the excitation on top of this uh, WK cycle. Um, because I, I want a full cycle in the original ADS, if you fold this, you, you get a three cycle. So one cycle becomes three cycle, and the one third cycle here becomes a one cycle. And we also need to do an extra spectral flow to match the spectrum. It was explained well in this paper. So, um, so here I, I compute what well, we compute the, the the spectrum. So let's first look at the background cycle. So we have this um, Riemann ground state with this dimension and a charge. Then we do the one over k spectral flow. We get a new dimension and charge after spectral flow, and you will see here the charge is zero. So this is a simple um, way to see we need this one over k spectral flow, and we can. Now we need we do the same thing for the string cycle. We have the dimension and the charge before the spectral flow, and then we do this one over k spectral flow. We get a new dimension and charge. Notice that we need to build the um, string cycles from the um, background cycles. So we have to subtract the background energy. So we do this subtraction here, and also we rescale the dimension by k. Because the original on one cycle becomes a three cycle, so the radius of the new three cycle is one of three, not one. So we have to rescale this energy. So if you do all this, you get the um, dimension and charge, and they are exactly the same as the spectrum from the worksheet. And we already know they have the same field content. And you can also understand the before projection from the um, requirement that um, in the Riemann sector, the left and right moving um, dimension should differ by an uh, integer. Okay. Mm. Uh, any questions? This orbifold is not resolved in the context of the full string theory? No. It's an actual singularity of string theory. Yeah, but. Um, but um, for string theory, is not a big problem. You can allow this or before singularity. But we don't, we don't have, have explicit brain realization of this, this, this conical singularity. Okay. So you also have this twisted sector string. Uh -huh. And ordinarily, I would have thought that you wouldn't be able to do a fractional spectral flow on the twisted sector string which has only a single cycle in the holographic CFT. Oh, so right. you, you can do fractional spectral flow by one over K on, on all of the K wound strings. Yeah, I understand the question. But yeah. what do you do for the, do, um, do you just have to do that first and then think about a twisted sector um, after you fix the fractional spectral flow? Frame? So if you want to do the um, ADS CFT, you have to do, you have to first find a symptotic ADS three cross three coordinate. And this coordinate, uh, you have many choices, um, but, but the, for example, one of them is in the Riemann sector. <coughs> but this, um, this strange sector is because you use the coordinate of the covering space, uh -huh. which is not the one you use for the ADS CFD. So, so are you saying that you have to fix the fractional spectral flow frame to be either orbifolded in SNS or orbifolded Roman Roman, and then you can think about the red strand as the twisted sector string state? Meaning, I don't mean the twisted sector in the overfold CFT. I mean the, the red uh -huh. uh, world sheet twisted sector. Uh -huh. It should be understood um, in the N sector or R sector. But this strange sector, because we want to compare to that the one, you can also do this spectral flow for the bulk, and then you stay in the R sector. Yeah, OK. So thanks. there's a different way to understand. Yeah, thanks. Now here we consider the more general before. So we, um, this is um, identification. So the y 
is rotated by two pi over k, and at the same time we rotate Poseidon phi. And there are two parameters, m and bar. If you look at the worksheet generator, the m is for the left moving, and m bar is for the right moving. Now to generate a string in a bulk, we need to do the spectral flow, but with an um, actual parameter m coming into the, the, the k part. Okay. And due to um, the spectral, in this spectral flow, so the r has an extra piece like this. So we can do similar thing here, apply the mesh condition and find dimension and the charge. So this is dimension and charge. So now let's look at the boundary CFT proposal. So it's very similar to the simple um, orbifold, but now the background is not the, the Riemann ground state, but the spectral flow state from the Riemann ground state, like this one. And we need to do the spectral flow, not one over k, but m over k. And this, uh, this state is uh, um, like to fill the Fermi, Fermi C from the Riemann ground state. Now, if we do this spectral flow for the Riemann ground state, we get the same state for, for the simple orbifold. <coughs> but if you do this spectral flow for, for the uh, string cycle, usually you will get different, um, completely different states. So they are not um, simple reliable in of states. Okay. So we here we compute the, the background dimension and charge and do the spectral flow, we get this one, and the charge is zero. So it's a simple reason of doing the M over K spectral flow. And we also find this dimension and charge for the string cycle, and we do this spectral flow. And uh, here we subtract the background energy as we scale the energy by K. Then we get the dimension, and we can see this exactly the same as the spectrum from the worksheet. Okay. Okay. So here we um, find um, th this map on, we, so we can match the spectrum for the tension for tension and string theory on the ADS3 orbifold, the simple orbifold and the general orbifold. So there are consistency conditions. If you um, study the string theory, so there's a, um, because we, all before this asymmetrical between left and the right, so we have to um, put the level matching condition. So this comes from the, this um, anomaly terms in L, and the difference between the L and L bar gives you, must be an integer <laughs> for the lowest like, um, to the sector. So you obtain this condition. And this condition has a nature interpretation from the boundary CFT, because if you look at the background K cycle, so the left and right dimension should differ by, in the Riemann sector, they should differ by an integer because of the SN before. So you obtain the same condition. And you can also understand this condition from the space time, because um, when the level matching condition, so this condition is satisfied, the before is indeed a ZK orbifold. Otherwise, it won't, even though it looks like a ZK orbifold, it will be a ZL orbifold where L is less than K. So if, if the orbifold is not, um, the order is not big enough, you cannot support the many twisted sectors. Okay, here I give some comments about um, this result. So the dimension and charge are measured in original, or usually called covering ADS3 because there are three coordinates. So we have this strange one over K or M over K spectral flow. You can also do that in the other coordinate. For example, in the R sector, correspond to the R sector. So this will be useful to study micro state background. So they are BDD shuffle. So this is a super dipole dipole charge K, right? Uh, oh yeah, the K. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you can also study in the NS sector so this goes down to the conical defect below the BGD threshold. And uh, so how to transform between different coordinates is also explained in this paper. And uh, it was pointed out by Martin Neck and McElgin um, in this paper, they show that the existence of this 
twisted sectors is related to the internal structure or, or more specifically is the moduli of the NS fibrins. So in our system, we do not have these internal structures, but the, the, string, the twist sectors of string theory should be able to see, to reproduce them. And uh, because we have an exact match between the D1, D5 CFT and the string, um, perturbable string on top in the bulk, so we can reproduce the, um, because the boundary CFT can reproduce the correct entropy of black holes. <laughs> so we hope this tension of string theory has enough states to st study black hole physics. Um, any questions? Okay, then I will talk about the, why the, um, the twisting sectors are important in the black hole formation process. So let's look at, um, if you try, to, let's try to compute the correlation function of many insertions on near the boundary. And so in this background, so we have a conical singularity at the center. And um, the, the, the total dimension of this insertions is at order one. And uh, the background has, has, has this um, ADMS. And you can see here, when k, k is the um, zk, the parameter in zk orbital, this k. When k goes as square root of n, then the ADM mass goes like minus order one here. So here, this is order one. So if you put, if you try to look at this um, collision function on, in this background, when the k go, goes as square root of n, then you will see the energy is enough to create a um, black hole. So you will meet the black hole threshold. Um, so it seems to say that the, if you, so uh, the black hole microstate become very important to understand this correlation function when k is bigger enough. So let's try to do some, um, to do analysis this from the boundary CFT. So if you look at this correlation function from the boundary CFT, so we found that um, the leading piece is from the untwisted sector, untwisted strings. So it means the strings with, um, so in the original covering ADS with one or two cycle integer cycle. And you also have corrections suppressed by K squared over N. So they are, um, so the expansion parameters K squared over N and uh, they are related to twisted strings. Roughly speaking, um, if you go to higher and higher order, you have more and more twisted sectors in the intermediate states. So you can see here, when K goes like square root of N, the correction from the twisted strings, even though it's, it's not important at uh, um, small K, but now becomes very important and comparable to the first one. So the twist strings becomes very important at the uh, black hole threshold. Um, we can try to understand um, better the, the first term. So the first term is coming from the contributions from untwisted um, strings. And it, um, it has a good geometrical meaning um, in terms of the so um, we got image formula. So if you look at the collision function on the ZK orbital background, but only included untwisted strings, you will see it can be written as a sum of um, Collision functions on the ADS3 background, but with some over images. Um, so this is a this has a very good geometrical meaning. So this is the um, physical space, and if you want to compute on um, the collision between the phi one and the phi two, we can expand that into the covering space and uh, compute our sum over the images. For example, the images of phi two. If you do supergravity, or then you just compute it, so you, you will see this is a correct thing to do. But now you can see when k is bigger enough, um, the corrections from twisted string is um, very important. So you no longer have this um, image formula, 
So the geometrical meaning is not that straightforward. Okay, so let me put a summary here. If you want to study black hole, the, the black hole formation and the long throat fuzz balls, when K goes at square root of N, then twisted strings are important and uh, you do not have straightforward geometric interpretation. Okay, so that's my conclusion. So we find the uh, exact weak, weak duality on this background. And second is when, when the, Z, the ZKL before this K becomes bigger enough, compared goes like square root of N, then twisted sectors becomes very important in the cohesion function. And this can be used to study the black hole formation and the wrong field fuzzballs. Okay, thank you. So, the evidence for your duality is matching the spectra on both sides. Mm -hmm. Do you also have evidence in terms of matching correlation functions? Oh yeah, we are working on that, and this this is the part of the result. Any other questions? No. Okay, so we can thank Bin again. There is no talk after. Sorry? There is no talk. No talk after. So, so just a question.